Let's take a look at a node that I came across recently that we can use to create something like a targeted flight path for any object. So this project file will be available on Patreon. If you want to grab it, you can do so on there. But we're, the node that we're going to be taking a look at is called the Ballistic Path node. And this node is going to require some points to start off with. So we'll come back to this here in just a second and show how we can use this to create like a flight path for like airplanes to do something like a uh, motion graphics type animation. But for now, let's just drop down a grid. Let's set the size down to something you know much smaller here. And then we can scatter some points onto that grid. And We'll set this to like 10. And then we'll take a look at this ballistic path. Oops. So with this, it's going to be by default set to the launch method of free, which means it's going to kind of randomly just throw these around to random positions. And we have a life here. So if I increase this, you can see that that's going to increase the lifespan of our object's flight. We have drag and mass, which also are going to affect the end result. We also have a gravity and FPS as well as sub steps, which we will need kind of later. We can also select this to clip it below a certain height. So if we leave this at default, it's going to clip it at the ground plane there. So as we increase the lifespan, we can have our objects actually reach the end of uh, or the, the ground plane. And then we have some different things down here for like groups and stuff to export so that we can do some different things like let's say clip the curves so that we can copy an object to the actual path and have a, have it follow along. Um, we also can adjust the velocity here that's going to, you can see, give us some different things as far as that. So you can use this to be the basis of like a simulation. And then you could like swap that object over to simulate it with a, an RBD simulation or something like that as well. So we can also set this launch method to targeted, which is going to end the flight path where we select basically. So let's take a look at how we can do that. So I'm going to bring these over here and I'm going to come back to this sphere, which is just a sphere with some UVs on it and a texture that I grabbed from NASA, I believe. NASA has a bunch of these textures that are available that you can download. So you can go to their website and find a bunch of different textures for like the moon or the earth or all sorts of different uh, planets in our solar system. I think they have a bunch up there for, for the different so, uh, planets. But you can just grab the one for the earth. And then let's drop down an add node. And I'm going to just add a point. And then I'm going to take that point and I'm going to pack it. The reason that we're doing that is because we're going to use the labs pick and place node, which requires you to have packed geometry in this second input. If I hover over here, it says packed asset geometry. If you don't have this packed, it will crash your Houdini, or at least it does for me. So make sure you pack that point. I know it's stupid because it's just a point, but that's what you got to do. So let's take this and then we can have that selected, press enter in our viewport. Let's zoom into the US here. And we can just click and place points basically wherever we want. So wherever we want to start our flight paths or have our flight paths start, that's where we want to select. So if we wanted to do it in California, we could click there, Florida, click down there. I'm going to click up by Chicago. Just click somewhere in there. Sometimes you have to like hold it. And then I'll click just in some different places. So maybe in Florida, maybe in like a New York, um, like a Mexico, um, California, maybe like a Texas one. So we have some different flight paths that we have here. So I'm going to press escape now. And then let's drop down an attribute wrangle. And we need to create our positions, or our target position, I should say. So we're going to do V at target P is equal to, and then we're just going to set that equal to the position of our points. And then we're going to move our points. So we're going to take at P is equal to, and then we're going to take a point attribute. So we're going to look at the point attribute, basically the point position of the first point that we set down. 
So on our first geometry in input here, we'll take the position, and then we're going to look at that first point. And all of our points are going to move there, except for we want to make this the second output here. So if I take a null, actually, before we do that, I wire this in, in between there. You can see that we have our different points placed around in here. So once I have this attribute wrangle looked at, all of them have moved to where we put that first point. So let's take a blast node after this. Set this to point zero and make sure it's set to points because we don't want to have a flight path for that first point. We want it to just be excluded. And then let's take our ballistic path node. And we can set this to that targeted position. And you can see kind of what is going on. So we'll need to maybe drop down the life. And let's actually come in here. Let's drop down a merge node. And let's bring back our sphere. We can kind of see what's going on here. So in our ballistic path node, we can play around with the, the life or if we wanted to increase the mass to bring that back down. So we would set this back to one, but we need to increase the mass quite a bit to bring those back down. If you want to increase or lower the life instead, you end up with these paths that are very, you know, not, not very smooth. So if we take our sub steps and we increase those, you can see that that kind of smooths out our paths as well. So there's two different options you have there. We can set the life up and increase the mass quite a bit. And then we maintain that nice smoothness of our lines, or we can increase the sub steps. You can also output the different groups here to be able to clip these in order to get them to, to where you want. We can also come back in here to our pick and place and just press enter again, and we can add another path. Let's say we wanted to go to somewhere, maybe up towards like Oregon or something. We hold, also we go to like a Mexico location. So you could set your locations. You could have like the locations of uh, different airports around the world, and you could use this for creating ballistic paths or these paths to um, represent like your, your flight paths for airplanes and stuff and do some sort of cool animation with that. Using this, I thought that was an interesting way. That was the first thing that came to mind. You can also do some interesting stuff with like a, like I said, an RBD simulation where we launch objects kind of like maybe you don't need to, um, you don't want to have it be fully simulated because sometimes it can be hard to kind of dial that in to get it to fly exactly where you want with the speed that you want, everything like that. So you could use this node in order to place down a targeted position on our ballistic path, play around with the life. And then obviously, as we said, the velocity attribute gets exported. So we could use that velocity to, to drive our, our simulation and import that and set the initial velocity of our our object as well. So lots of different things you can do with this. Uh, I would definitely recommend playing around with it and seeing what all you think it might be useful for. But this was the kind of the first things that came to mind for me. So anyways, hopefully this helped you out and you've learned something that you didn't know existed in Houdini. I didn't know this was uh, a node until recently. So um, always something new to, you know, learn in Houdini. There's a, a ton of different nodes in there. So anyways, hopefully this helped you out. Thank you guys for watching and have a good day.